Hello everyone, this is our fourth monthly update video of the year, which will be covering everything that has been made in March. Thank you so much for the support that we have had. This month has been really big for us, and it means a great deal to all of us. As normal, we'll be going through the four updates that we've had this month, starting with Creature update, Code, World, and then finally back to Creature again. So, we've been rather busy this month, starting with finishing the Lunar Mirror model sheet. This is used to help our modelers to easily produce our dragons, creatures, armor, weapons, and many other things. We recently added a scent system into the game and decided that our Icy Crown and Volgant needed to have sniff animations alongside this. Our friends at Omnisound were busy making the new sounds, the Icy Crown. Uh, here are just a few of them. So having... having... <laughs> Having listened to the community, uh, we decided that we would need to polish one of the Volgan animations earlier than intended. We managed to pull the wings closer to the body in this trot animation and make it look far better than it was before and better than just the sped up walk animation that it had previously. More quality of life animations will be made once animations for everything else has been finished, which I'll mention, la mention later on as well. We currently um, are in the process of making the Patreon supporter skin, which was voted by the Patreon, um, the Vampiric Blood Moon. It will eventually be on all the dragons, but for now, it's just on the Icy. We have been coming up with some new AI concept art called the Woodcracker. This creature will live in the pine and redwood biomes. It will be a passive herbivore, mostly ignoring humans unless provoked. They typically eat the same as other herbivores, however, seem to be able to eat bark, pine cones, branches, and sometimes even wood itself. Humans will be able to tame these creatures and use them as mounts for transporting goods and gathering resources. Having worked on the woodcracker, a subspecies was also added um, to the woodcro um, sorry to the woodcracker jungle variant. The jungle uh, woodcrackers are also herbivores. However, they prefer to eat decaying plants, using their more shovel-like arms to dig under fallen trees. The wraith and Sheldon um, have been given some love, adding a 3D model sheet for them. Some of you may notice the slight changes in the Sheldon's model sheet compared to the artwork. This was done because we somehow overlooked the fact that it would not be able to actually physically look up. Uh, but in any regard, um, so it was just changed to be more trike-like in appearance. Um, we've also bridged the gap between the Scaith and the Wraith with the Kraith. Um, this is slightly bigger than the Scaith, but smaller than the Wraith acting almost like a Carnotaurus, um, being one of the fastest AI mounts, 
um, that will be added into the game, depending on the biomes, of course. The Scathe has received a lot of love this month with two new skins, the Volcanic and the Torrent. We will be um, fully finished. Sorry, let me say that again. I'm doing this in one take. We're trying a new thing, by the way, so I apologize. Um, the Scathe has received a lot of love this month with two new skins, the Volcanic and the Torrent. We have fully finished all animations for the Scathe, so here are a few that have not been shown off with the skin on. Keep in mind, it will look better once they are actually in the engine. Omnisound has also done a few sounds for the skin. And the grassland antelope has been fully animated and is currently having its AI worked on by our programming team, along with the scathe, as they will both be added at the same time over the next month, fingers crossed. The William Drone and William Warrior animations have also been fully finished. Most of this was actually done in our weekly Sunday streams. Eck is currently sculpting the details onto the Warrior William, and depending on how we do on Sunday, that may or may not be shown along with the skin. Noah has been working on both the current map and the future desert map. Starting with the future map, he has added a few different types of geysers around the map, along with making the environment just generally appear a bit more natural. He also worked on various types of mushroom species that will be edible to some species of dragons, some AI, and to humans as well, of course. Tweaks have been made for better performance, such as the entire jungle biome assets being swapped for better performing models, uh, while still keeping the amazing look, which was um, increasing the FPS for some people from 30 to 40 up to 50 to 60 in those specific areas. Weather will soon be reintroduced as we've managed to optimize it more than we originally thought we could. It also includes a new weather effect, mist, which can happen during different types of rain, but also sometimes as a standalone weather event. We've added a new long grass area, allowing for more hiding spots in open areas. We also added a few more stone structures and shelters, which you can do by exploring, which, sorry, which you can find by exploring the map. We've also expanded the map as we've decided that on the full release of the game we may end up using this map as an island off the main coast of Valeria. We also added new cliffs with a number of different formations. Noah has also been doing a few streams over on our Discord allowing the community to help him create a new cave, which has been named the Prismatic Cave, located somewhere on the map, but again, I'll let you explore and find that yourself. So, there's also been a number of quality of life improvements. We've updated the sky lighting just to see how well it turns out, along with improving the performance. Scent has also been improved in a few ways, such as the particles disappearing faster and the scent distance being adjusted. 
Um, there's been a few things as well that have been changed. So we've slightly reduced the sprints FMV, um, fixed dragon idle animations. Um, they now remain more stable. Um, we did a large test as well, um, which are being conducted every Saturday at nine with our patrons. These typically um, are more for just mass testing and trying to crash the game so we can try and fix it. But we also use this as a time to interact with the community. We managed to get up to 20 people onto the server before it ended up crashing. Um, we found out what's causing that crash and we're currently working on fixing that crash. As our main goal is to have 100 players per server, so it's very important we find out these issues in advance before we eventually release to the main game. So that brings us on to a, you know, the final thing. And this isn't scripted, this is me just talking normally. Um, mainly because I was having problems with the thing I use. So, uh, we have reached a stage this month specifically, where a lot of our creatures are actually animation-wise finished. Um, so just going over what I have currently. So going over what I have currently, we have finished fully animation-wise the Vulgan, the Icy Crown, William Drone, William Warrior, the Antelope, the Scaith, and we're that means that we just have the Kirin and the Black Death left. That's not including human animations, but a lot of those have actually already been finished. They just need to be checked. But we're getting incredibly close now. The AI for the Antelope and Scathe is being worked on and is almost halfway there. And be, they could be added um, in the next few weeks. The William Drone and William Warrior are also upcoming. Um, and the Kirin itself is also almost done as well. It's around halfway finished animation wise. So we're incredibly close to, to getting there. And it's all thanks to the Patreon members and the content creators who follow the game and make videos. It helps so much. Just, you know, the supporting in any way you can, even just talking in the Discord. It gives the boost to the team that sometimes they do really need it. Um, and yeah, we really appreciate all the work um, that, you know, just the community does and puts into it as well, not just the dev team. So yeah, I thought I'd got a little bit of a spiel and uh, let you know what's, what's going on. But next month, hopefully we'll be, we do the same amount of work as we did this month. We'll be finishing up the Kirin and the Black Death probably won't be finished next month. That is because that's it's been done by um, another animator that isn't officially part of the team. They're more of a freelance. So hopefully it'll be done next month, but it won't be added next month. Um, just for those reasons. Hopefully the Kirin will be added next month and so will the Antelope and Scathe. Then we'll be working on the humans for the first time. Well, not the first time, but we'll be going over it properly. And... Uh, We'll see how far we get in with them, but we also guaranteed that at least a playable state of humans will be in there, so even if it's just running around. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll see where that goes. But as usual, thank you very much for watching. If you want to support the game, please head over to our Patreon, where you can be wide into or above if you want to help out testing the game and making sure it works. But if you can't afford that, please don't feel that you have to. Real life always will come first. If you're a content creator, if you want to get in touch with me, Clack Knight, for a key to the game, or if you want to cover content, or if you've got questions, then please feel free as well. Um, but the main thing that helps out is spreading the word. Just join the Discord, spread the word. That's all we need. <laughs> uh, but thank you very much for watching, and have a good rest of your night, guys.